Hello and welcome. How exciting. This is the first ever episode of Forget Me Not, The Missing Podcast. It's something I've wanted to do for so long, but I've been too scared to take the plunge. But you know what? It's 2021. Let's do it. So this podcast is all about people who have gone missing in the UK, delving into their stories, the theories behind what could have happened to them, and hopefully raising awareness for those unsolved cases. So if that's your kind of thing, please keep listening. I tell you something, I did not appreciate how hard it would be to record a podcast. I thought I would just get all my material together, press record and wonderful, happy days, off we go. No, 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 I keep getting so tongue-tied, I keep saying the wrong thing and I also catch myself sounding like some sort of philosopher, like Aristotle or something, because I'm like, thus, nevertheless, therefore, and... Yeah, it just doesn't sound like me. But anyways, I'm hoping that I've managed to figure it out now. We'll see. What I wanted to say before I start was that I hope the sound quality is okay. I don't have the fancy equipment. This is my first ever attempt. So hopefully it's nice and clear. You can understand it and you can follow along pretty easily. So anyways, let's stop rambling and get into the case of Claudia Lawrence. Now, the reason I decided to do the case of Claudia Lawrence is because I remember this happening, I would have been about 15 or 16, and I remember watching it on the news and watching the subsequent TV interviews and Crime Watch episodes, and it literally just grabbed me, and I just remember it so vividly until now. It's just something I've followed ever since, because it just seems so senseless. It seems like something bad happened to her, but why? We don't know. The way that she was portrayed in the media just kind of upset me. And I just think that so many people want answers on this case. If you know anything about this case, you would recognise her dad. He's done so many TV interviews, YouTubes, different kind of things like that, trying to raise awareness of her case. So I think it's just a really good one to start the case because it's somebody I can relate to, a 35-year-old woman just living her life and, you know... God, you just don't know what's around the corner. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad did happen to her, but that's definitely what the police think. And I think as you listen to this episode, you probably will come to the same conclusion. But um, anyways, let's get into it because I've been talking for far too long. Claudia was a chef at the University of York, having previously been privately educated at the York College for Girls, and she had taken up various different chef jobs before ending up in the university, but she decided the hospitality industry had too many unsociable hours for her. She seemed to have a shit together, she had a good job, she owned her own terrace cottage, and everyone said she was a great person, she had glowing reviews from her employer, and um, just seemed to really enjoy her life from what I can see. I know I'm sounding a bit sarcastic here but I just think it's crazy that any time a woman goes missing it's got to be something to do with oh well she was promiscuous oh well she was texting a boy it's like and that doesn't mean she should maybe be murdered maybe be raped it's got nothing to do with it so I don't know why that's always brought up but I had to say it just because some of the rumors slash theories about her disappearance do revolve around that because that's what the police have kind of set up so I just wanted to get that in there but anyways let's start talking about her last known whereabouts. So let's rewind to the 18th of March it was a Wednesday and it seemed like any other Wednesday Claudia had started a shift at work at 6 a.m more power to her she finished at two in the afternoon a friend said she gave her a lift like halfway from work to her house And she was also seen on CCTV at 3pm outside a shop near her home. She was also seen by a friend near her house at 3.05pm. So we know she definitely left her shift and went home. In addition to this, she did speak to both of her parents on the phone that evening. And with her mother, even discussed Mother's Day plans for the following Sunday. Now, I don't know about you, but that is not something I would do if I was planning on, you know, disappearing without a trace. It wouldn't be like packing my stuff and being like hey mum yeah I'll see you Sunday because that would just be cruel that would be so awful so that's just something to think about when she was on the phone to her mother she told her that she was home 
and that she was going to have a nice early night as she had work again first thing in the morning. The last correspondence that anyone had with Claudia was at 8.23pm when she sent a text. She also received a text at 9.12pm from a male friend who worked in a bar in Cyprus. However, this was the last time that anyone managed to text, call or hear from Claudia. But Claudia did not show up for a shift in work the next day. The manager tried to call her, but her phone went straight to answer the phone. Now, probably frustratingly now, looking back, he didn't do anything about it. He didn't think anything of it. I do feel like it's a bit strange because if she was always reliable and punctual, it would be a bit suspicious that she didn't turn up. But, you know, people quit their jobs all the time. So maybe he just thought, oh, she's she's had enough. Anyway, so he didn't do anything about it. That same day on the Thursday, Claudia was due to meet her friend Susie at their favourite bar, the Nags Head in York, but she didn't show up. Again, Susie tried to get hold of her, but there was no answer on her phone. And Susie noted that this was really out of character for Claudia because... Claudia always had her phone on her. Uh, by the Friday morning, Susie still could not get hold of Claudia. And at this point, we're getting to the 48 hour mark of Claudia being missing. And the first 48 hours are always so important. They are the most critical in retracing the steps of missing people. So it's starting to get a bit worrying now. So Susie's concerned at this point. So she gives Peter a call, Claudia's dad. And he and the landlord of the Nags Head go to Claudia's property. Peter had a spare key, so he let himself in. Her house was in good order. The only things missing were her phone and her work's rucksack with her chef's whites in it, which still to this day have not been recovered. Strangely, she did leave her purse with her bank cards and her money at home. But again, she would have left work at 5am, so she may have just forgotten it. This would have been entirely understandable. If she's anything like me, she would have been half asleep at this point. Uh, the scene seems to suggest she left to walk to work. There was nothing out of place. Um, it's not confirmed whether she did actually leave to walk to work because she was not seen on CCTV. However, this isn't a big issue because with the CCTV on her way to work, if she was walking on a different side of the street, she wouldn't have been seen. So it cannot be confirmed. But due to the fact her rucksack was taken and her chef's whites, we think she probably did head off to work. At 2pm on Friday, the 20th of March, Claudia was officially reported as a missing person. Because Claudia was not a vulnerable person because she was middle-aged, she could have, you know, chosen to leave off her own free will, the police didn't really take it that seriously at the start. It was a bit, it was a bit of a slow start to the investigation, which always irks me because if a family member says, this is not normal behaviour, I don't know why the police go, yeah, but, like, no, you should look into it. The 48 hours at the start are the most important. But it happens all the time in missing person cases, which is just so frustrating. But anyways, it was a slow starter. And it was actually five weeks later that the police upgraded the missing person inquiry to that of a suspected murder. One of the irritating things about Claudia's case is that there's just so little evidence. There seems to be no DNA trail. There's no, just nothing, just no trail. I'll go through what evidence there is. So the one critical piece of evidence is that her phone was actually on until 12.08pm on the Thursday when it was then deliberately turned off. So does that mean, did she turn it off? Was she alive then? Or did somebody take her phone after they did something to her and then turn it off then? Do they destroy it after that? We just don't know. That is a lot of questions but also her phone did not leave the local area of where she lived so that's another reason why the first 48 hours of an investigation are so important because she was local she, she was around in the area so she she could have been found but frustratingly obviously nobody realized she was missing because you, you don't expect that do you the next piece of evidence is a rusty white van so the police revealed that this vehicle was seen trying to talk to women on the route to Claudia's work on the days leading up to her disappearance. It's not been confirmed whether it was seen on the day of her disappearance, but it was reported as being suspicious, trying to talk to women. I don't know, maybe it was asking where Claudia was, maybe it was trying to find Claudia. Uh, maybe they were just asking random women to get in the car because they had uh, bad intentions, we just don't know. Another piece of evidence was a cigarette end that was found in Claudia's car. Now, Claudia did have a car, but it had broken down at the time, and that's why she was walking to work. So because of this, I wouldn't think that this cigarette end 
would be that of the person who killed her unless she knew her murderer and that's assuming she has been murdered but maybe she knew her murderer and this is his cigarette maybe it was somebody that she was dating don't know could have been a friend could have been somebody who knew what happened to her but uh, they did find dna on this but then never confirmed whether this had any relation to anything i mean they've not actually charged anybody with anything so i doubt that it did but that is just something of note that they found now this final bit of evidence i personally feel is so significant to this case and i don't know if it's because i remember this from crime watch and it's like etched into my brain or if my instincts are right and this person knows more or is involved or hears something, I don't know. But anyways, there was some CCTV that was released of a male who was reportedly acting suspiciously, loitering around the back of Claudia's house, dressed in all black with a black rucksack, black hood up over his face. And he was just weirdly loitering around the back of her house. I mean, that's a bit strange in itself. At 5.50 a.m. on the day she went missing. So this is within the first hour that we think she went missing. We assume she left her house at 5 to go to work. But then we also know her phone pinged in a local area continuously, which suggests she never actually made it to work. So this guy in this area at that time, to me, just screams significant. I don't know. I mean, there was another sighting related to the CCTV, which, I don't know... Not sure about, but a woman said she saw a man and a woman arguing outside Claudia's place of work at 5.35 a.m. And the man was also wearing dark clothes, dark hoodie. So could it be the same person? Could that person be arguing with Claudia? Could something have happened to her and he went back to the house? I mean, it's a possibility. It can't be discounted. But I really think this man that they've never been able to identify that I know of just holds the key because surely he saw or heard something if he wasn't the person involved. Police did make a total of nine arrests in the case of Claudia of people they suspected to be involved or to know something, but nothing ever came of these. No charges were made. The men claimed they were just friends or acquaintances of Claudia. They either knew her, they either used to drink with her or they used to frequent the pub that she went to. So nothing happened of that. What is interesting is that the search for Claudia did actually end up spreading to Cyprus where they did question individuals out there. They um, said that the people who were questioned who were known to Claudia were reluctant and didn't really want to be interviewed. But to me, considering her passport was in her house, it does seem strange that she would be in Cyprus or someone in Cyprus would be involved unless they seem maybe they have some evidence that somebody flew over from Cyprus who knew her on the day she went missing I don't know it's an active murder investigation that's how they're treating it so we really don't have all the information but to me I would personally discount the Cyprus theory I just I just don't see how it links in I generally do think it was somebody closer to home somebody watching her she was a pretty girl maybe maybe she had a bit of a like jilted ex lover or maybe i don't know it could be the first theory about what could have happened to claudia is actually that she decided you know what i want to break i want to i don't know go to cyprus or go away no one know who i am and i'll be back in a few weeks now obviously this has been discounted quite quickly because you know it's now been what, coming up to 12 years? I mean, I don't know about you, but that's a really long break. So, um, yeah, the police kind of feel like that was a possibility at the start, but now they just think, because there's literally been no trail left, that she can't have just disappeared. It can't have happened. The second one is that maybe she had a medical emergency on the way to work. She was walking to work, I don't know, had a heart attack, died. Again, swiftly discounted because there is absolutely no evidence of this. Where's her body? Where's the CCTV image? Where's the 999 call? So these were like the two starting theories that the police had and they quickly moved on for them. I mean, within five weeks, they said they thought it was a murder inquiry and that's how they were treating it. So these were just a start of the 10 that quickly went by the lay-by. And I actually find like things like this kind of annoying because 
The parents are like, there's no way she just disappeared. I know my daughter. I know she didn't just up and leave. And the police are like, I mean, I know you can't rule it out, but if family and friends are saying, no, this is not like that person, why is it in almost every missing person inquiry, they go, oh, well, we'll just wait and see. It's like you're missing out on crucial time. That first 48 hours are so crucial. And you're like, "Mm, well, maybe she just left. Oh, annoying. But anyways, let's move on to the next theory. Now, the next theory was, did she become victim to a serial killer? Now, there were some killers operating in the UK at the time. Some had links to York, in particular, Christopher Halliwell. And there was a few women who were murdered similar times or within the same decade who did have similarities to Claudia. But whether she had the same fate was largely dismissed by the police. They said they did investigate different serial killers and they just couldn't see that any of them were involved in Claudia's case. However, I don't think that we can then dismiss this because maybe it's a serial killer they don't know anything about. I mean, so many people go missing, so many women end up dead and we don't know what exactly what happened to them. And I think actually maybe it wasn't a serial killer. Maybe it was an opportunistic uh, murder. Maybe it was somebody who saw her and just had the urge. Maybe it was a first time murder. You know, those sort of cases are really hard to solve. So her being murdered by a stranger, I don't think we can rule out at all at this point. Another theory is that Claudia was actually murdered by somebody she knew. Now, if we believe what the police say, that she had all these different lovers, maybe it could have happened, you know, maybe she fell for somebody who was bad, somebody who wanted to harm her, maybe she had a bit of a twisted ex, maybe he was a bit jealous, maybe, you know, he stalked her, we just don't know. I do think that that is a really strong possibility that maybe somebody she was romantically involved with, or maybe even somebody she rejected, just, you know got a bit obsessed with her I definitely think that that could have happened it could even have been the man in the CCTV we just don't know so I definitely think that that's a line which I'm sure the police are investigating because they have said time and time again they think it's something to do with her relationships that ultimately ended up with her being murdered so that's obviously what the police are thinking more so than it being a stranger and you know at the end of the day stranger danger is a real thing but women are generally most likely to be hurt by people they know So I think that's definitely one of the main theories that I think is most likely true in this case. If we do believe that, though, we do have to believe what the police say about all of her different relationships. Now, I'm not saying that she didn't have these relationships. She was a 35-year-old single woman who liked to go out drinking. I'm sure that she, you know, met people and got involved with people. But to the extent that the police are saying that she was getting involved with all shady characters and stuff I just don't know I mean I don't personally know Claudia but I've done a lot of research into her and if I listen to what her friends and family have said it just doesn't seem in her personality and at the end of the day they know her better than the police and you know the police seem to have this like obsession like oh but she was a solicitor's daughter and she used to go out and drink and meet men it's like oh no like that's so <laughs> I don't know I just I just don't buy that she was involved in this really dark, shady side. But you don't know because you never know people. I mean, we can't completely discount it. But I think if we do believe that she was murdered by someone she knew and it was an ex-lover or somebody she was in a relationship with, we do need to consider that theory. I mean, her dad has refuted that, saying there's just no way. She used to get up at like 4 or 5 a.m. for work. She used to work all day. She'd then sleep and repeat and she'd go out with her friends And her friend Susie said the same, like she was shy, she wasn't really into that, but obviously everyone's got their own secrets, so we don't know, but that's just something worth considering. Well, I only wanted this podcast to be around 20 minutes. I didn't want it to be too long a one, because I know sometimes it can just go on a bit and there's only so much you could probably listen to my voice. So we're just about the 20 minute mark, so I think I'm just going to call it there i hope you guys enjoyed it i would be really interested to know what your thoughts are what do you think happened to claudia do you think she's alive do you think she's been murdered was it someone she knew was it christopher halliwell the serial killer what what do you guys think please let me know comment on my social medias um at forget me not pod on instagram uh facebook if you search 
forgetmenot the missing or if you use the url facebook.com slash forgetmenotpod please talk to me um i'm hoping to get this on youtube not filming my face i'll just use the logo um let me know if that's something you'd be interested in as well if not you're probably listening to this on spotify but i am hoping soon it's going to be put onto different sites like google podcasts and pocket Cast. if it's not already i just need to wait for the app that i use to push it out on there so anyways thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed the first episode if you guys have any suggestions of cases you want me to cover please let me know because i'm all about covering different ones learning about different ones this was just a start of a 10 i hope you enjoyed it anyways see you later